we got something pretty special today because as of late modders have been extremely active adding in amazing new content to fallout 4. unfortunately in this one i think we actually have a pretty nice culmination of mods for those of you looking for that more modern tactical vibe for fallout 4. although even if you're not i have a couple of extra mods towards the end for the more traditional fallout 4 players we're going to be looking at a balance of some armor weapon and even some quest mods that give you an alternate way to play through fallout 4 and are definitely worth starting a new playthrough for. Although before we get into that, we have to talk about something a bit more serious, and that is male pattern baldness and today's video sponsor keeps. Once you get to a certain age, and that may just be in your 20s, you or someone you know may start losing a bit up top. And in fact, two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness before the age of 35. And one of the best ways to prevent hair loss is to be proactive, in particular when you still have some hair left. Keeps offers itself as both an affordable and convenient solution. After signing up, a licensed doctor will review all of your information and recommend a treatment plan and all of this being done online. Then from there, your treatment is simply mailed to your front door once every three months. You don't even have to leave the house. And the best part, if you're feeling a bit uneasy about it at any point, you can message your doctor with some of the concerns or questions you may have. So if you're ready to finally take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash juicehead or click that link in the description to get 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash juicehead. But first and foremost, we have a particularly interesting interesting and a quite large one with Galactac Retribution. So in the past, there was a mod for Fallout 4 known as Galactac, this largely being an armor-focused mod. And although, as you can see in the background, Galactac Retribution has a plethora of armor options and customization options for you to use, this is really turning that up to like not even 11, but 12, as this mod also offers in a fully voiced quest line that integrates into the main story of Fallout 4, kind of giving you an alternate route to take if let's say you don't want to side with the Minutemen for the 15th time or the Institute Brotherhood or Railroad. It's a pretty special one, and I think one that's going to interest a lot of you, honestly, on multiple fronts, whether it be the armor or the questing itself. But first and foremost, thematically, this is a pretty interesting one. The premise of this is these guys are bounty hunters, and as you could obviously see, the armor they are wearing is very heavily inspired by the Mandalorian armor you've probably seen either in the TV show, movies, or other Star Wars media. And really, their entire idea ideology or being the theme of this faction overall is kind of a crossover in between Mandalorians and modern military, which funny enough fits in extremely well into Fallout 4 because there are so many modern military mods out there right now, like the vast majority of weapons slash armor mods, but that Star Wars Mandalorian spin does actually make it fit into the sci-fi aspects of the game also. So as you kick this off, you're going to have quite a few different options as to how you want to proceed. Right off the bat, they do have a giant bounty board applying to many of the notable foes in the Commonwealth. So as you get into their very uniquely styled base, you will actually have an introductory mission you'll have to do for them. But then from there, you could actually just start taking down bounties, getting a pound of flesh, returning it to one of the leaders at this base, and collecting bounties as a result, which will award you Beskar. This is actually kind of a cool mechanic in that the way to get all of these new armors that are added in with this, in which there is a mountain of customization options, and even just armor options to choose from, is largely the Beskar. So if you want to craft this stuff for yourself, you're going to have to be doing some bounties getting Beskar, and it kind of fits in in a natural or pretty cool way, like it is a tangible or interesting reward for yourself and your character. But that's really only one half of this, as the mod itself does feature a fully voiced and integrated story also, that does tie in with Fallout 4's main quest. Sort of at the bat, after installing this one, you will have a countdown. Raiders are attacking the Museum of Freedom. Are you going to help and save Preston? You can do that, or if you wait, you'll find that eventually the people at the Museum of Freedom will be deceased as the raiders are successful. And doing some quests for these faction leaders will integrate into the Commonwealth overall, meeting familiar faces, taking on familiar tasks, or even some new and interesting ones. I don't want to spoil too much about this because the questing aspect of this was pretty cool. It would kind of bounce around being a very vanilla focused or vanilla themed quest and then other ones were much more custom with unique objectives. And sometimes it did rely on those traditional Fallout 4 quests, but it was a nice twist on things, giving you a different approach to actually tackle the Commonwealth in addition to what is a fully fledged and highly customizable armor mod. I cannot understate how many different armor combinations are added with this one. You have numerous pieces of this Star Wars slash modern military themed armor, things like actual armor pieces themselves from helmets to shoulder piece.
pieces, but also vests or body plates, which are highly customizable. There are a ton of different combinations of what you want to appear on your armor, what color your armor is, or what color one piece of your armor is. There really is a ton you can do with this, and one of the other cool twists is it actually integrates this into the gunners, who are kind of the enemy of this faction in many ways. But now as you encounter the gunners, they will have a lot more interesting and just cool looking gear that you can loot off them and use for yourself or just witness on them. So overall, this is a pretty big one, but I really like the integration of this one. The Adaculus mod from a couple of different perspectives. Do you want an alternate way to play through Fallout 4's main story? Do you just want a cool new armor mod? Do you want to do some bounties in the Commonwealth? This mod kind of has all of that and even a bit more to find and explore, and I think it acts as a nice backbone for a playthrough where you are using a lot of these other modern tactical mods. But speaking of other modern and tactical mods you should check out, next up we do have the Glock 19X. This is one of those mods that I completely slept on. Saw this mod come out and I was like, oh cool, another pistol mod, but not really interested in that one, but I was completely wrong. It has the staples you're going to want, a lot of customization options, whether it be different types of slides, different color customization options, scopes, underbarrel attachments, etc. If you want a full auto machine pistol, this will definitely give you that with nice large magazines you can equip. But where this mod actually goes to the next level and why it has quickly become one of my favorite pistol mods for Fallout 4 is the animations, or simply just some of the best ever done for Fallout 4. Between the equip, running, and just walking around animations, they feel really natural. It's one of those things that's kind of hard to put into words, so hopefully the video captures it, but I found myself when using this mod, it was just kind of a pleasure to have on screen because it looked nice and it looked a lot more almost active. Look with other pistols like the 10mm pistol, let's say. It's just kind of boringly sitting there on your screen or you were used to seeing what it does, but with this one, it felt new and unique and like all of those animations really flowed together to just look really good. I've been using this one a lot over the past couple of months, you've seen it in numerous videos and really the reason is these animations are so good. It has all the other stuff too, but the animations are what really make it stand out. Next up, we do have Ice Storm's Orsus F-17 which is going to add in another high quality sniper mod for Fallout 4. It does have a full set of unique customization options, including some different caliber types you can assign to it. Like many snipers, you're going to have a plethora of different scopes to attach to it, but even further, things like rail attachments or a bipod. And from there in game, it feels very satisfying to use with, again, fully custom animations. And really, playing with snipers like this, I think is just one of the most satisfying ways to play Fallout 4. It is the best application of that combat system, and overall, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one, and it pairs quite well with the Glock 19X. The HKG3 is also going to beautifully apply here, as this too has a ton of customization options which to me really strikes as the big appeal of this one. Whether it be underbarrel, sight scopes, or just the overall feel of the gun being a DMR, or something a bit heavier with a drum magazine, you can modify a lot with this one. So much that I really can't even show you all of the major customizations in the background, but it tops that off with having solid sounds as well as animation. So you really do have quite a versatile weapon platform here. You're not just getting a basic and boring G3, but a lot extra and added on top of that. A lot of different ways this can spawn in the Commonwealth on enemies or again for yourself. Plus, who doesn't like a good G3 in Fallout 4? I feel like it's one of those weapons that actually fits in pretty well with the Commonwealth. But of course, if you're just holding a couple of cool weapons, that's not the full picture. You have to look great in the process also, and that's why we also have the Desert Operator. This is a fairly simple new outfit mod for Fallout 4, unfortunately only applying to female bodies. But I actually feel like the simplicity of it is the appeal of it, and that it's really just somebody wearing a vest that you could customize with a few different options and some jeans, and that kind of encapsulates how a lot of people want their their character to look in this game. So nice straightforward and simple one, but it looks really good in the process. And again, with those customization options, even though there's only a few, you could probably get it looking exactly how you want for your specific character. But a nice little add on that can apply not only with that previous outfit mod, but with a lot of others out there is the XOF CVC helmet, which is going to be a tactical helmet that features quite a bit in the way of customization. Also a couple different paint jobs, but a lot of different attachments or accessories you could have going on with this helmet. 
moment. Goggles up, down, balaclava, radios, etc. I love stuff like this in a playthrough. I feel like it adds a nice little item for you to use on your main character that fits in well with a lot of those other armor outfit mods. Like the two major armor mods I show you in this video could be used well with this helmet mod. But I know for some of you, you already found your favorite weapon mods, you already found some of your favorite armor mods, you're looking for something to really turn things up to 11 or make the tactical aspects of Fallout 4 a bit more interesting. And next up, we have the perfect mod for that with the A10 Warthog CAS. Several years ago, we got the Stingray Air Support mod for Fallout 4, which added in callable airstrikes, which was cool and very Fallout themed, a very lore friendly addition overall. And what this mod's going to do, as you can see in the background, is make it so when you call in those airstrikes, it's going to be an A10 Warthog with the custom sounds as well as the custom explosion or damage types going on in the world. This one's really cool, and I feel like it's one of those ones that again fits in really well with just the mod scene of Fallout right now with so many modern weapon mods. You can download a ton of new cool weapons, or you could just have an airstrike that you call in as almost a grenade alternative. It does have a cooldown, and you do actually have to unlock it for yourself, so it is fairly balanced. It still could kind of be overpowered, but who cares? Because this looks, sounds, and just feels really awesome to use in game. In a very similar vein, we also do have the MW Sentry Turret, adding in the Sentry Turret to appear in the Call of Duty series. It's a fairly simple one. It's going to add it in as a turret you could place down at a settlement, but it too fits in really well for all the reasons I just stated and just looks cool. The regular turrets are okay, but when you have waves of enemies attacking your base, this one just feels a lot more formidable. I definitely feel quite a bit better protected with this one. There are three different variants that visually are identical, but do have better stats per the variant. And coupling this with one of those sandbag or custom asset mods out there could make for a particularly cool or interesting base in Fallout 4. But speaking of making awesome bases or settlements in Fallout 4, we also do have Rise of the Commonwealth for Sim Settlements 2. This probably sounds familiar because this was an expansion for Sim Settlements 1. But with the debut of Sim Settlements 2, of course, we need a new one. And functionally, what this will add in is fully custom city plans that you could actually assign to basically all of the various settlements in Fallout 4, so with very little to no work by you, you can just have a fully custom city and settlement. You can watch it get destroyed and built back up, and then over time just have this natural living thing going on around you. It's really awesome, and for those of you that don't necessarily love settlement building, this is the perfect mod for you. Use one of these, then have one of your settlements gradually build up into a living city over time. And one of the other pretty cool aspects of this one is it has several custom additions, city plans that will actually react to decisions you make, like who you side with in the game, giving you a custom bunker hill. There's a few things like that that I think sweeten the deal even a bit more and make it just feel like a really good addition to Fallout 4. Sim Settlements 2 in general, even if you don't want to be super hands-on with it, just improves the settlement system in such a significant way. I really feel like it should have just always been a feature and is largely a must download. But on the topic of improving the game and what is there already, we also do have unarmed animations redone. And what this will do, as you can imagine, is change up all the various animations that have to do with punching other people or moving around without a weapon in Fallout 4. And this is one of those ones that I like for the novelty aspect of it. I don't necessarily think this is a massive upgrade over what was there before, but it feels new, unique, and different. And oftentimes when I have giant load orders for Fallout 4, that is exactly what I'm after. So for that reason, I feel like it makes this mod another really nice addition. Something to keep in the background, maybe you go for an unarmed build that game, maybe you just find yourself desperately punching when you run out of ammo. Either way, having those animations look a bit different and more interesting is definitely a plus for me. And actually, one mod that works phenomenally with those animations is the XO3 Predator Armor. This is quite a bit of a different one. It is a mix between a Fallout-themed armor as well as the Predator series and the armor Predators wear in those movies and games. It's really just one set of standalone armor functionally being quite similar to the Chinese stealth suit. I actually really like that. There are a few unique attachments like a blade as well as a shoulder mounted gun, although neither of those actually function. Although with those unarmed animations, when punching with the blade, it really does look like you are using the blade, which is cool. But even though this is kind of a weird looking armor for Fallout 4, it isn't really lore friendly. It kind of feels appropriate at the same time. 
like this could be some top secret project by some shadowy group like the Enclave in the Fallout universe. It doesn't really feel all that out of place, which I love about it. And even further, again, it does have some functional applications. You can apply predator vision with this one or even stealth when crouching like the Chinese stealth suit. So I think it makes a nice addition to the game as a cool and unique one-off armor to use for yourself or one of your companions. But if you are looking for some weapons that do fit a bit more thematically with Fallout 4, first off, we do have crossbow. This mod's great. It's a fairly simple one in that it is really just adding a crossbow into the game. Visually, I think the crossbow looks really good. It definitely holds up to the standards of many other modern weapon mods. And functionally, it kind of works as a crossbow. You shoot arrows at enemies and sometimes you can pick them up after. But where this becomes way more fun is that it adds in three different types of arrows. Regular arrows, explosive arrows, as well as storm arrows, which are kind of a cluster of explosions. And just on the fly after downloading this one, by double tapping the reload button, you can switch in between arrow types. This makes it so much fun to use and actually fairly well balanced. You're gonna have to craft those other arrows, which can get expensive. But if you're in a fight trying to be all stealthy and then all of a sudden the enemies see you, you could quickly switch to a more powerful arrow that maybe you only have a couple of and use the big guns on a tougher foe. I'm not really sure why, but just that singular feature of this one makes it a really fun addition to Fallout 4 for me. In the future, I would definitely welcome more arrows being added, like cryo arrows or even stuff like plasma arrows would be pretty cool. But even thus far, it's a blast to use in Fallout 4. But the one final one that I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on is the advanced plasma pistol. This is a cool one in that it is a piece of kind of cut content or piece of concept art content from Fallout 4. A more obscure one as far as weapons go in that you could see Hancock holding this at some point and basically from there it is just a plasma pistol functionally being very similar to the other plasma pistols but visually being very different hence that advanced titling. The typical ones you can get are all going to be semi-automatic which I like they have some basic customization options but functionally they're all pretty similar like many of the other energy weapons the different barrels you attach to this one will give you a range of different effects but there's also a special legendary variant that fits in really well and it is fully automatic and a ton of fun to use. So overall, kind of a smaller or simpler mod, but I love having some of those cut content weapons or here a concept art weapon actually getting added to the game. It obviously fits in perfectly. It matches with Bethesda's original vision or vision at some point. And these are just some of my favorite weapons to throw in the background and hopefully stumble upon during a new playthrough. But overall, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. There's a nice long list of mods. Hopefully there's a lot of different stuff for people out there, whether you want some new quests or story content to improve your settlement building or even just some new armor or weapons. With that said, I thank you all again for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you all next time. Later.